Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, it is in the name of the Lord Jesus that this morning we ascribe the glory and the honor that is due your holy name. We thank you, Lord, once again for awakening each and every one of us from our sleep to be in your presence this morning. We are asking that, Father, you enlighten every darkness in our lives by your word this morning. We are asking that you refresh our spirit by your word this morning. We are asking that you empower us by your word this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And also, Father, we ask asking that you go before us with your consuming fire, Lord, this day. And every hindrance and every frustration that the enemy has planned before us this day, Father, let your consuming fire consume such in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, deliver us from every such afflictions in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We give you the praise, we give you the glory, we give you the thanks once again for this privilege in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. We all are coming to God's presence once again. Hallelujah. Peter said, times of refreshing are in the presence of the Lord. So let's go before the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, as we lift up our voices and worship him with these songs.
Good morning, saints. We're going to be praying specifically for ourselves this morning. Alpha, thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to come before your presence this morning. We thank you. We bless your name in Jesus' name. Our first prayer is, Father, thank you for your great plans and thoughts toward me, which are of good and not of evil. To bring me to bring me to unexpected end. 
Jeremiah 29, 11 said, Father, I know the thoughts that I think toward you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you. We bless your name. Thank you for your great plans and thoughts towards me, O oh Lord. Thought of peace, thought of good, which is very good and not of evil, to bring me an expected end. O oh Lord, we thank you. Thank you, O oh Lord. Thank you that you think of me. The thought that you have for me is good. The thought of peace, the thought of prosperity, the thought of, to make us good, to give us an expected end, O oh Lord. Father, we are grateful. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for your great plans, O oh Lord. Thank you for your great plans towards our family. Thank you for your thoughts towards me, O oh Lord. Thank you for your thoughts that is good. Thank you, Lord, that you, that good thoughts you have for me, O oh Lord, to bring me an expected end, not of evil. Father, we bless your name. We worship you. Thank you, Father, your great plans towards us. Thank you for your great plans and thoughts towards me, and which is very good and not of evil to bring me an expected end in Jesus mighty name amen our next prayer father thank you for your abundant and abounding grace working in me daily and making me fulfill life gloriously let's pray father thank you for your abundant and abounding grace working towards me, working in me daily and making me fulfill life gloriously. As he said in your word, 1 Corinthians 15, 10, by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace toward me was bestowed upon me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than all. Yet, I, but the grace of God, which was with me, Oh, Father, thank you. Thank you for your abundance of grace, abounding towards me, walking in me daily, making me fulfill life gloriously, gloriously in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, we thank you. We bless your name. Thank you for your abundance and abounding grace, walking in me daily and making me fulfill life gloriously in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Lord, thank you, Father. Thank you for your abundance of grace. Your grace, oh Lord. Thank you for your grace working in me daily and making me fulfill life gloriously in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Our next prayer. Father, let every token of lies against my life be frustrated and destroyed. Make every diviner against my peace and progress, mad in the name of Jesus. Let's pray. Father, let every token of lies against my life be frustrated and make every diviner against my peace and progress, mad in the mighty name of Jesus. As he said in your word in Isaiah 44 verse 24, thou said the Lord, thy redeemer, he formed me that have formed thee from thy womb. I am the law that make it all things, the stretch, forth, and heavens alone, and spread it abroad, the earth by the, myself. Thou frustrated the token of the lies, and make it divine as mine, and turn it that the wise man backward, and make it the knowledge foolish. Oh my God, thank you. Father, we ask you this morning, let every token of lies against my life be frustrated and make every diviner against my peace, progress, mad in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Lord, thank you. Father, oh Lord, let every token of lies against my peace, against my life, be frustrated and make every diviner against my peace and progress, mad in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Our next prayer. Father, you promised never to leave me nor forsake me. Therefore, let your mercy prevail over judgment in my life and destiny. And let your hand continually be with me in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's pray. Father, you promised never to leave me nor forsake me. Therefore, let your mercy prevail over me 
over every judgment in my life and destiny and let your hand continually be with me in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hebrew 13, five said, let your conservation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Let's pray. Father, thank you, O Lord. You promise never to leave me nor forsake me, O Lord. Therefore, let your mercy, let your mercy prevail over every judgment in my life and your destiny. And let your hand continually be with me in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we thank you. Father, you are God. You promise never to leave me nor forsake me. Never to leave thee, O Lord, nor forsake me, O Lord. Thank you, Lord. Therefore, let your mercy prevail. Let your mercy prevail over my life. Let your mercy prevail over every judgment in my life. Oh, Lord, thank you, oh, Lord, for your destiny and the destiny. Let your hand continually be with me. Let your hand be with me, oh, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, Father, oh, Lord, you promise never to leave me nor forsake me. Oh, Lord, therefore, let your mercy, let your mercy prevail over every judgment in my life and destiny and let your hand and continually be with me in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Our next prayer. Father, enable me with you giving the giving grace and help me to always be a sower of your seeds in your kingdom to open up my destiny in Jesus' mighty name. Let's pray. Father, enable me which you are giving grace. Help me to always be a sower. Help me to always be the sower. You that give a seed to a sower, the seed to sow in your kingdom to open up my destiny in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Lord, enable me to give me to a giving grace. Give me the giving grace, oh Lord. Help me to always be a sower in your kingdom. In and to open up my destiny in the mighty name of Jesus, as you said in your word. Therefore, as you abound in everything, in faith and utterance, and the knowledge, and in all diligence, and in your love to us, see that you abound in this grace also. Father, we thank you. You enable me, O oh Lord. Give me the giving grace and help me to always be a sower of seeds in your kingdom to open up my destiny in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, you are the giver. Give me the seed to sow into your kingdom. Oh Lord, we thank you that you are my God. Give me the giving grace and help me to always be a sower of seeds in your kingdom to open up my destiny. As he said in your word, now he that ministered seed to the sower, both the minister bread for the for your food and multiply your seed sown and increase the food of your righteousness father oh lord you are god of increase father enable me to with a giving grace and help me to always be a sower of seeds in your kingdom to open up my destiny in the mighty name of jesus the next prayer father Help me to put myself, to put myself in the path of your love and grace throughout this week so I can live a fruitful life in, in your kingdom, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Help me, O oh Lord, to put myself in the path of your love and grace throughout this week so I can so I can live a most fruitful life in your kingdom. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. Help me, O oh Lord, to put myself in the path of your love. Your love is everlasting, O oh Lord. Thank you, Father. Help me to put myself in the path of your love and grace throughout this week, O oh Lord, so I can live a most fruitful life 
in your kingdom in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Father, visit me. Visit me with favor. Visit me with favor. Make me fruitful. Put, help me to put myself, oh Lord, in the path of your love. Help me to be fruitful, Father, abiding in your grace. Father, oh Lord, help me, oh Lord, in your path of your love and grace throughout this week, oh Lord, so I can be a most live a most fruitful life in your kingdom in the mighty name of jesus oh lord help me help me put myself in the path of your love help me to be obedient to your word help me to be fruitful and give me the grace throughout this week so i can live a most fruitful life in your kingdom in jesus mighty name hallelujah let's pray father teach and enable me to become more reliant on you as I go my way today, that you, your power may manifest through me. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, O Lord. Teach me and enable me to be, become more reliant on you as I go my way today, that your power may manifest through me, O Lord. Father, we thank you. As you said in your word, O Lord, that the word is my redeemer, the holy one of Israel. I am the Lord thy God, which teacher thee to profit and lead thee by the way you should go. Father, as I go today, lead me the way I should go. Teach me, O Lord, and enable me to become more reliant on you as I go my way today, that your power may manifest through me, that your power may manifest in me, O Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, teach me, O Lord. Teach me the way I should go. Teach me the way I should go. Father, O Lord, enable me, enable me to become more reliant on you, O Lord, as I go my way, as I go my way today, and your power may manifest in me, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Finally, Lord, help me not to neglect the disciplines I need to meet. Father, help me. Help me not to not neglect the disciplines I need to meet with you regularly and to drink from the water of life, refreshing my soul in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Lord, help me not to neglect the disciplines, the disciplines I need to meet with you, the discipline that I need to be in your presence daily. Father, oh Lord, help me, oh Lord, to meet with you regularly, to drink from you from the water of life, refreshing my soul every day in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Lord, help me not to neglect the discipline I need to meet with you regularly and to drink from the water of life, refreshing my soul daily in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Lord, Father, help me. Help me, oh Lord. Give me a new dimension of discipline. Give me a new dimension of discipline. Do not let me neglect the need. I need to meet with you daily. Oh Lord, regularly help me to drink from the water of life, refreshing my soul. Oh Lord, thank you. Thank you for answered prayer, oh Lord. Thank you, oh Lord. Help me, oh Lord, not to, not to neglect the discipline I need to meet with you regularly, oh Lord, and to drink from the water of life, refreshing my soul in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. For answer to prayers. Amen. Our Bible reading is from John chapter 10, from verse 1 to 18. We're going to read John chapter 10, from verse 1 to 18, and Brother Julius will read for us this morning. Good morning, God's people. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. So we are reading from the NIV version. And our scripture is taken from John chapter 10, verse 1 through 18. The good shepherd and his sheep. Very truly, I tell you, Pharisee, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate 
is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said, Very truly, I tell you, I'm the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves, robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pastures. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that they may have, they may have life and have it in full. I'm the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees, when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I'm the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me just as the father knows me. I know the father. And I lay down my father, uh, my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of his system. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice. And there shall we, and there, excuse me, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my father. May God bless this holy radio, this living word. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So nobody took it from me. I laid it down that I might take it up again. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, welcome again to this um, morning devotion. This mo- the morning devotion this morning. I continue on my subject of what we are in Christ. Yesterday, one of us asked me a question. He said she thought it should be who we are in Christ. <laughs> I said, yes, you are correct on one side. There are always two sides to the coin. Like she said, there is who we are in him. That's fundamental. That's nature. There is what we are in him. That's having become who we are in him. There is what he has made us. So the two are in line together. The what will not come before the who. The who produces the what. So let's get that straight. Hallelujah. Yesterday, and I thank God for that so that we can have some clarity. Uh, Some people have things to say, but they, they are a bit timid to call or ask. It should not be so. You, with a right spirit, you should be free to uh, call for clarification. That's very important. Glory to God. Yesterday, we stopped at the point of being freed, or let me use the word freed already, from the dominion of Satan. 
And I want you to know, my beloved brethren, that the hour has come for you personally to awaken yourself to the fact that the devil cannot put things on you. He cannot give you anguish, discomfort, <laughs> disease. When we say that, people are a bit confused because they are getting sick every time. Perhaps the person who said it is already sick and all this, but that all those does not nullify the truth. There are factors that we have allowed. You remember there was a parable that uh, the soul good seeds. And I, while the Bible says, while men slept, <laughs> the enemy came in and so tired. While men slept, pretty much they allowed him to sow the tars. While men slept, the enemy came in and sowed the tars. And when the Lord will say, He said, An enemy has done this. So let's not forget that he did it, didn't mean that's the right thing to do. They have come for you and I to rise up in faith. Knowing that want and poverty, sickness and disease are things of the past as far as we are concerned. They ask come for us to rise up in faith and be able to shout out loud amidst the confusion, the crisis, the turbulence, the fear, you know, the condemnation of other men no matter what is going around you, to still be able to say, the Lord is my shepherd. <laughs> I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in good pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. We just read John now. I come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. And in that passage, you come to see what I just said. There's the shepherd, there's the thief. He said, the thief coming up for to kill, to steal, to destroy. He said, but I, I know my mission. Our redemption is real, God's people. And we must understand his mission and the mission of the thief by the side so that we can put the thief in his defeated position. He's an outlaw, not in your territory. Put him in his position by faith. You are free and I like you wherever you are. I know some of you, even at work, you are listening, understand that. But I'd like you to say with me this morning, I am free. And hear yourself say to yourself, I'm free. Jesus made me free. Say it to yourself. I'm free from sin and death. I'm free from sickness and disease. I'm free from lack and want. But they say, look at the person, they look at the you see. That's their problem. Faith is a fight. He said, now the violent takes it by force. Have you not read John 8, verse 36? He said, if therefore the Son shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Free indeed in true reality. I come that you may have life. Oh, I have the life of God in me. I have the life of God in me. <laughs> I remember many years ago in the Nairobi Kayam, missionary, and there was a lady who was Ugandan, those early days, we didn't have anything. They would always come to help us pack our equipment to the uh, meeting venue and drive us back. We didn't even have a car at the early stage. And I think it was about the third month that I was there. This lady, wonderful lady, after we dropped the equipment, I could still remember, was in front of the house trying to say, to her, around golf course in Nairobi that time. 
And she said, Pastor, I want to I want you to forgive me. I said, What's going on? What is it? He said, Because when you came, I didn't like you. And I hear that a lot of those days. I said, What did I do? He said, The way you talk. You talk as if there's nothing wrong, there's nothing you cannot be. If you just talk, I, I, what do you want me to say? <laughs> he said, But I want you to forgive me. I said, Why? He said, But so I started talking like you. <laughs> I started talking like you, and I like it. I know who I am. And I. I will not forget 1996. That was 1996. In the year 2000, of course, by then the church has grown in our place. This same lady, after a few years, entered my office with her family and put a, an envelope in my hand. And I, as I was taking the envelope, I think it was not sealed. A key fell. It was a car key. And I looked at it. I said, what was it? He said, Pastor, we had a meeting in the family. Uh, during the week, God has used it to change our lives. We know where we were when we met you. See where we just want to bless you with this car. You see, transformation by truth. Transformation by truth. When she was hearing that, it was so strange. How can you say you cannot be this? How can you say you cannot be that? How can you? I, I'm not the one saying it. God already said it for us. But we have to enforce the reality of who we are. We have to enforce the reality of what he has made you. He said, I come that you may have life. Has he come? Yes. Did he succeed? Yes. So what do you have? Life. And when you hear that life, what do you talk, what he's talking about? He's talking about the life of God. That is, I believe my have eternal life. Eternal life is what you have. It's the life of God. That life is the nature of God. And you have it. You're not going to have it. You have it. It doesn't look as if I have it, but you have it. So what do I do? I must enforce the reality of what I have. You have the Father's nature abundant in you. You are in Christ. He said, my life is in in Christ and Christ in God. For something to come touch me, he has to touch him first. You have to see it. The realm of life, this realm of life has in it the life that transcends all reasoning. The problem with many of us is our mind has not let go yet. we are still struggling with <laughs> what we see, what we hear. It's time to be translated. He said, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. You see the way it is. So that you may prove what is that good and acceptable, a perfect will of God. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You know, whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them, lest the light of the glorious gospel should shine. So that's what the devil does. Blind us from the truth. Now, even though you are saved, you, you still can say it. It's still not real to you. If it's not real to you, then how can you walk in it? You are in Christ. You are in the very realm of life. <coughs> Excuse me. You have eternal life. That's God's very substance. Glory to God. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I'm the life. You have that life. Celebrate what you are. Start talking what you are. <coughs> Start shouting on the mountain top what you have. 
That's how to make it real to you. It can be really real to you. Let your heart crave for all this with all fervency. This is the time you won't keep robbing me of what belongs to me anymore. You won't keep robbing me. I know who I am. I know what I have. That's why the Bible says, I close with this today, Galatians 5 verse 1. Stand first, therefore, and be not entangled again in the yoke of bondage. Because we were in the yoke of bondage, and remember, he has delivered us and translated us, delivered us from the yoke of bondage, delivered us from the kingdom of darkness, and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Galatians is now saying, stand fast, fight, be not entangled again in the yoke of bondage. The gravest things we do to ourselves as believers is this possibility of lapsing back into bondage after he has made us free. Because we just can't see it. It's time to walk in the realm of the spirit and of faith instead of walking in the realm of the senses. Wake up and take what belongs to you. See who you are, see what you have, celebrate what you have. Shout it on the mountaintop. Fight with the fight of faith to walk in what you have. So your time is up. Let's get into the presence of the Lord again this morning. Remember, I always say this personal moment with God is your essence of morning devotion where you are privileged standing in the presence of God and saying it to him with your own words, the way you want it, the way you desire it, as it touches you. While you are saying that also, celebrate who he has made. Thank you for freedom. Thank you for liberty. Thank you for grace. Thank you because you are both sickness and disease. Thank you because he has taken it. He said he himself took our infirmities. Celebrate it. No matter what is in your body, as you are celebrating it, it will be leaving you. Glory to God. Let's just release us. Let's go into the presence of the Lord this morning. We'll be back shortly.
Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. What a most refreshing time you just had with him. <laughs> what a most refreshing time. You are not the first. Job said it. Just show me where he is. Let me go talk to him by myself. You are not the first. And I went before him by ourself. A story changed. So I'm persuaded as a change of story for you today. Because you see, it's our loving father. None of us ever come before him and return disappointed. <laughs> it's our loving father. Forgiveness just landed for you again this morning. Okay. Cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Answers just handed to you again this morning. Strength given to you this morning. Health multiplied upon you this morning. Therefore, in whom Christ has set free, is free indeed. You are free indeed. This is a glorious year for you. A year like no other. A year where the flavor of God is seen all around you. It's made you free. Don't entangle yourself again with the yoke of bondage. Walk in the light of your freedom. Walk in power, walk in grace. Glory to God. Remember, this program runs Monday through Fridays. We're back on this platform tomorrow <coughs> by 5 a.m. Mountain Time. But before then, target one more person before tomorrow to get back on this platform with you or to get on this platform. They will thank you for it. And God will honor you for it. But for today, know that all that you have asked him for strength, for grace, for wisdom, he has given. So walk in. Be when situation come, like the Lord Jesus Christ, writing with finger on the, on the, on the ground. And then when he spoke, wisdom spoke. Be like that all through today. <clears throat> that as you speak, wisdom will speak. The kind of wisdom that overturns mountain by the root, the kind of wisdom that the world cannot withstand, will speak to you. In the name of Jesus, it's time for you to be celebrated. And wisdom will make you celebrate, will make them celebrate you. Bless you with the wisdom of God today. That if nothing stranded, in nothing that you know not what to do, I bless you with the wisdom of God today. Wisdom that always makes a way out. You will not be stranded today. You will not be held back today. Nothing will be too difficult for you to dissolve today. I bless you with the wisdom of God today. In the name of Jesus, at work, at home, wherever you are, that wisdom of God flows to you. Make ways for you. Put you on the pedestal to be celebrated in the name of Jesus. Go in this your mind, celebrating the goodness of our God. I will be back on this platform tomorrow morning, 5 a.m. Mountain Time. Let's share the goodness together. <coughs> Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. God bless you. As God lays anything in your heart to do, do it. Because your liberty is in it. I see somebody just crying now. Is this God telling me to do this? Is this, can this be God? Do it. Your liberty is in it. Don't let it down your destiny. Jesus is Lord. See you tomorrow. Jesus is